Vaiguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaiguru Ji Ki Fateh. So, video number one. <laughs> yeah, today, um, today is January 29, and this marks 10 years uh, since I returned from Afghanistan, my second deployment. Um, I've been talking about this with my wife for the past, you know, two weeks or so. And we had some time to discuss, you know, what this, what being back means to us, what that time of our life was like, how difficult it was, um, you know, how much we've changed, uh, you know, in, in all these years. My wife is one of the very few people that, uh, that I have in my life today that met me before I enlisted. So she's seen, you know, quite a progression, you know, and just in terms of my personality and my temperaments. Um, my hobbies, my lifestyle, and things, um, and she's been through quite a transformation herself as well. So, you know, we had a lot to reflect on, and after we were talking about it for a while, my wife says, "You know what? We should celebrate." So, I said, "Okay, celebrate being home." How do I feel about that? My knee-jerk reaction was, "Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I don't want to celebrate." Um, and like my honest feeling was that uh, I didn't. I don't feel that this was something that warrants celebrating. Um, and that sounds a little weird to say. And so what I mean by that is that I have so many mixed feelings about, you know, my time overseas and my time since I've been back. So it's kind of a weird period of my life where I have almost no good memories about it. Yeah, I can't, I can't think about my deployments without thinking about my mom dying, without thinking about my friends dying, without seeing my friends getting hurt sometimes right in front of me without thinking about the constant stress of, you know, thinking you're gonna die today, or, you know, just living the lifestyle um, of just go, go, go all the time, or just, you know, whatever it is. Um, and then there's, so, you know, do I wanna celebrate that? No, I don't wanna celebrate that. Also, there are a lot of people, really good people, who didn't make it back. Do I wanna celebrate that? No, absolutely not. Um, and there are a lot of really good people who came back and their, their life was just changed forever because of their trauma or because of their physical injuries. And so, you know, my heart really aches for all those people out there, all, so many soldiers who suffered so much, you know, while, while, we, were all, while we were deployed. Um, and I don't even want to celebrate that that part of my life is over now and I'm able to move forward to something else. Because, you know, like I came back from my two deployments with, you know, so much heartache and so much trauma that I feel like it really, you know, the post-traumatic stress and the chronic anxiety and, you know, major depression and all these other things that came with that. Um, like I struggled with that so much and like just getting out of the military um, was really, really difficult for me to try to find a place to where I fit in uh, in civilian society. Um, it was almost impossible. Um, and I came up against so many barriers in trying to do that that I feel like I really lost, you know, some of the best years of my life. Um, you know, and I got out of the, I got out of the army in my, you know, mid-20s. Um, and I was just, I, like, my life just hasn't really been able to go in the direction I've really been fighting to take it in. Um, so, you know, I have some mixed feelings about it. Now, to be fair, it wasn't all bad, right? I met some really amazing, really beautiful people while, while I was enlisted. Um, some of them I'm still very lucky to have in my life still, and we still talk. Um, you know, I learned a lot of really important, you know, life lessons. Um, I matured so much, especially after my first deployment. Um, I'm really grateful for that. Um, also, I didn't get shot. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of near misses, but I didn't get shot, so I'm really good for that. And, you know, as much as, like, however many times I got blown up when I was overseas, um, I still came back in one piece. So I'm really grateful for that as well. Um, you know, even though I had a lot of difficulties, you know, adjusting to life outside of the military, um, I'm still married, um, which is more than I can say for basically every person that I know who was enlisted. I don't know anyone who's... Um, who's still together. I don't have any substance abuse problems. Um, again, that's just like a lifestyle thing. Um, I was never into that. Um, you know, I'm not 
and so like I'm not self-medicating with a lot of my symptoms with that kind of thing so like I've had an easier time in that re regard as well um, I have a daughter now uh, she's four years old and yeah, just an amazing amazing bundle of light um, so I have a lot to be grateful for so with this in mind I was talking to my wife and I said okay I don't want to celebrate but we can commemorate because I'm really grateful to be here I'm really grateful that you know things are not worse for me and they could have been so much worse um, at, I, uh, I'll save it for another time but oh my gosh things could have been really bad for me if I just made you know one different decision you know at any point so um, uh, so yeah we decided to commemorate so this was a couple days ago now this was I think it was on the 26th um, I said I don't want to party uh, you know this is I want to I want to honor that time that I had in the military and my time overseas and um, I said I, I want to do that by giving back you know anyone who knows me knows that I'm all about selfless service and taking care of other people and um, you know I, I make that I try to make that the center of my day every day because that's that's a part of how I cope um, and it's a part of who I am you know honestly but um, so we decided to make bags um, these uh, we made these um, supply kits for transients so I'll tell you guys the backstory on this real fast after I got out of the military well, I'll say after I got off of active duty, before I was like, I was in the National Guard, I got off active duty in 2010. I'm living in California with my wife. We're driving down the road one day and we meet this, uh, we see that there's this um, transient who's on the side of the road, he's asleep. It's freezing cold outside, I mean for California. It's nothing like, you know, Toronto winters or like Calgary or anything like that, but um, it's freezing outside, so we're like, you know what, we should go see you know if there's anything we could do to help because he looked like he was a really young guy come to find out uh, you know he's in his mid-20s just like us um, you know he was a teacher he's you know traveled the world he was he was pretty successful you know in early adulthood and then you know he uh, got into a little bit of trouble with his family um, he and his family parted ways um, then and personally he you know, just fell on a hard time. He couldn't get back on his feet. He had no one to turn to, and with nowhere to go, he was suddenly, just all of a sudden, you know, out homeless. And so, um, you know, it was, a, it was a really sad story, touching story. Um, we got to know him. His name was Brandon. Um, we went down to a restaurant that was just right up the street. We got him this big, you know, burger and fries and a drink, and uh, uh, got him a gift card so that he could get some more meals later on. Um, and you know we we're asked him like how can we help you you know what's a day in the life like that kind of thing and just having that interaction with him really changed our lives in like a really profound way um, ever since we met Brandon we've just had it in our hearts of like we got to try to do more you know of just like acts of kindness wherever we can put them in and like especially if we see any transients or anything on the road we always try to help them as much as we can um, and so since 2010, my wife and I, we started building these kits. I, of course, am using my reference of being in the military, either going out in the field and doing training exercises or living in very austere conditions on, you know, on my deployments um, where we didn't have running water. You really didn't have, uh, you didn't have constant electricity. Um, a lot of the times, you know, my second deployment, like we didn't have, you know, cell phones, et cetera, like, or, or any kind of communication. Um, just because of you know where we were but um, so I'm using that I'm thinking okay so let's get some, we're gonna all of our drinks are gonna be in bottles uh, so that they could refill it later um, they need clean socks they need stuff for hygiene um, you know when it's really hot outside we give extra water when it's raining we give ponchos when it's freezing we give hand warmers and foot warmers um, or like uh, blankets things like that and of course like we're trying to be smart with how we price everything so that we can do more with less resources, you know, with less money. Um, but, uh, you know, overall, like, it's been a very rewarding um, endeavor. We, you know, we've come to talk to a lot of these people because I, I don't know if you've ever had to beg for money, <laughs> but uh, it is just dehumanizing, humiliating experience to have people walk past you like you don't exist 
or to yell at you like there's something fundamentally wrong with you for you know for being poor. Um, I know I grew up in extreme poverty. I know what it's like to have to have nothing to be you know you know days away from being out on the street or you know dumpster diving. Um, so it's like I have so much compassion for these people, but you know a lot of people get really really angry when they see poverty. You know, um, they I don't I don't know what the disconnect is with them, but like it happens, right? Um, but anyways, yeah, we, when we sit and talk to them, you know, a lot of times, you know, that's what they appreciate more than anything else is having that human interaction of somebody come and shake their hand or sit and just talk with them for, for a little bit, um, and be kind to them. And so, um, you know, we also come to learn a lot of transients have unmanaged, undiagnosed diabetes. Uh, a lot of transients have, uh, um, poor dental hygiene. And so, you know, they have loose teeth or missing teeth and they, they live with chronic pain, uh, things like that, you know. Um, so we had to be more strategic with what goes into these kits in terms of food, like, you know, no hard food and, you know, no chocolate bars or things like that. Um, so, and, you know, nothing that's gonna go bad in the heat or, you know, gonna, gonna melt or things like that. So um, we've, we've got it down to to a science now of what goes in these kits and want to give them out and so that's how we decided we were going to commemorate you know this 10 year you know I guess I don't know if anniversary is the right word but you know commemoration of me being back it seemed pretty fitting at the time we invited a bunch of our loved ones from the community to join us and um, it was it was a really beautiful event I think I really really appreciate um, having that opportunity to share in that with my, uh, with, with, with our friends, uh, as opposed to just getting together and, and having a meal or, you know, throwing a party or celebration or something like that. Um, what, I mean, the, I'll tell you guys that on my deployments, um, I had a lot of near misses where, I, like, I'm very surprised that I did not die. It was like a, a miracle that I didn't die on some of these times. And coming away from that, those experiences gave me this feeling of I am on borrowed time and life is short and I gotta do the most, of make the most of this opportunity that I've been given of just living another day. So every day that I wake up, I feel like I have to earn it. Um, I'm always trying to think about, uh, I gotta give back because you know, I, um, I just, I have a very different perspective now uh, after those deployments. Um, and, you know, I guess I'm lucky, you know, in that sense that I don't have, I'm not really being eaten away with a lot of, like, just overburdened with so much anger and sadness and, you know, the feeling of, like, I don't belong or things like that, which I think, um, a lot of people do come away from those experiences with. I, I, I mean, I battle with it a little bit, but, um, more than anything else, I'm always thinking of, like... I gotta do more and I gotta try to help other people. And the longer that I live, it's, it's, uh, my life becomes less and less about me and more about the community and, you know, trying to leave something behind for other people. Um, so I feel like this was a good way to honor my time in service of thinking, okay, you have this whole time in your life and all these lessons that you learned. And, uh, you know, what are you gonna do with that now? You know, how are you gonna give back? So, um, as I'm talking about the community and other people um, trying to do more for others, I, th I, I just want to close off you know, today's video with saying that um, soldiers, when, when a soldier deploys, they're not the only one who's really uh, serving. You know, they're not the only ones who are having a, a difficult time in that period. There's the, their friends and their family, the people who are, who are left behind go through so many struggles as well. Um, the people who are there to support those soldiers, you know, in their, in their, in their group of friends or in their communities, um, you know, they go through a really hard time. And this is something that I didn't really think about very deeply when I was in the thick of it. But afterwards, especially as I was talking to my wife, and my wife and I, you know, we talked off and on a lot through my, we didn't get married till like towards the end of my enlistment. Um, and after I got back for my second deployment, we got married. But we talked all the time, like through my first deployment, 
through my second appointment and in between. And, um, you know, especially after I got back from my second appointment, talking about how hard it was, you know, for my wife for, you know, years later, uh, connecting with certain people in my family and, you know, hearing about the stress so that they felt like not knowing if I was alive or dead and they didn't know if they'd hear from me again and things like that. Um, you know, or not wanting to miss a call, you know, um, but my wife said, you know, she wouldn't take the subway because she was, she didn't want to miss a call from me and, you know, she didn't know when she'd hear from me again, things like that. So there's a lot of people who suffer as well um, and who deserve a lot more credit than they get, you know, just being in that, being connected to the military, even if it's peripherally. Um, so it's like, you know, I, I mean, uh, I give so much, I have so much respect for military families, military spouses, um, and those people who are, you know, who are close friends up and help to support, you know, soldiers, you know, when they're out overseas and things like that. So I, th I think about the people who help me and who are, um, who are my support in my time overseas, some of my mentors, some of my closer friends when I got back, the people who, you know, tried to be there for me when I was back. And I am like, I'm so appreciative that I have them um, and I had them in my life at that time and I, I don't really I don't even now think I realize how much I I really needed them but you know I'm just I'm so grateful that um, I have I have them I have people in my life who, who care about me and who try to put that extra effort out to, to be there for me um, and I know I'm trying to give it back um, but uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm really, really grateful. So I just, I want to end with that, I think, for today. I have some stuff coming up on the weekend. I'm going towards this uh, program called the Veterans Transition Program. Uh, I'm living in Canada now, so if you're in Canada and you know somebody who's a veteran, if you're a veteran and you're living in Canada, you need to look up this program. Uh, look up the Veterans Transition Network. Um, and it helps the veterans come back and you're you you have a lot of veterans have a lot of common problems with dealing with their trauma when they come back um, And so you might have a hard time moving forward reintegrating in civilian society You might be living with guilt or post-traumatic stress or whatever it is um, You might need medication things like that and so this program really helps you to look at all of the auxiliary symptoms that you might have connected to your time in service um, and it shows you how to navigate them, gives you interventions for how to, how to manage your, how to manage your symptoms, things like that. So I'm looking forward to that this weekend. It's a 10 day program. Um, it's split up over a couple of weeks. Uh, so that's what I have going on. Once I'm done with that, I think that I'll come back and I'll do a video and talk to you guys about it, but I'm super excited about it. So I'll talk to you guys soon, but thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and yeah, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful to be back. Why did you call Why did you keep